The first thing I like to do with the bike is attach the wheels and build up from there. To do that, I want to get the brake rotor on the wheel first. Otherwise, once the wheel is mounted, we won't be able to put the rotor on. We ordered two brake rotors and they each come with six screws in a little packet. So you'll need a screwdriver with a Torx T20 bit. Now in mounting these, I really like to use blue thread locker, blue Loctite. These things vibrate and you don't want things to vibrate loose over time. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip these zip ties and I need to remove all of these nuts. Now the wheel has an arrow on it that shows rotation direction and so does the brake rotor. You wanna make sure to match the arrows up when you're mounting them. Feed all of the wires through the rotor. If you're wondering why there's two six pin connectors on the motor and we only talked about one hall sensor, it's because we have a duplicate, it's a backup. So now we're all the way down here with the brake rotor. We gotta pass that spacer through here and yep, double checking rotation, that looks good. All right, so I'm gonna take a screw and dip it in a little bit of thread locker. So a good way to make sure that this is mounted properly is to mount the screws kind of in like a star pattern. So I did one screw, I did the screw across from it. I haven't tightened it down yet, but I'm gonna skip a screw and then do one and then skip a screw and then do one so that the brake rotor mounts pretty centered. And then once I tighten it down, I'll tighten it down that way too so that the forces holding it onto the motor are also pretty even. It's very important to make sure these are all tight because if you mess that up, you could lose your brake rotor or worse, chop your motor wire, which is a very obnoxious and expensive fix. With all those tightened down, I'm gonna go ahead and place the bracket spacer back into place here. And I'm gonna put this wheel on the ground and move to the front wheel. Now the front wheel also has a rotation indicator. So this one spins this way. We're gonna go ahead and spin it around because we want the disc on the left side of the wheel. And we'll just repeat the same process for this brake rotor. Now that that's done, both wheels can be mounted. All right, now here I've got the rear wheel. It's gonna be oriented this way and I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the swing arm. The first thing I'm gonna do is pull out these two washers. These washers come with the frame kit and I'm gonna place one on each side of the motor. I'm gonna mount the motor with the orange wire facing backwards. You'll notice there's quite a bit of space here. There's quite a bit of play, but luckily they provide these adapters here and they go just like that. So we'll take one adapter and they also give us these two screws. And so we'll go ahead and we'll put one in place. And then same thing with the nut, we'll put one nut on and that'll just be hand tight. We're not really attaching it for real yet. It's just there to hold things in place. And then I can go ahead and spin this to the other side and repeat the process. And with the nuts on each side and the screws in place on each side, even hand tight, the wheel will no longer be able to fall out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the swing arm to the body of the frame. There's a bolt here that goes through the center of the frame. Unscrew it, line that up with the swing arm and drop the bolt back through. Make sure that you put the washers back on. And then with this placed up, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the nuts down. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and mount our shock here. So the way I'm gonna mount this shock is using these M8 threaded rods and bolts. These are five centimeters long, and these are lock nut bolts. And I got this from a local hardware store. Once the rods are in place, you wanna tighten them from both sides again using ratchets. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is swing the front of the bike off the edge of a table here, and that's gonna allow me to attach the forks here. I'll use my five millimeter screwdriver to unscrew the top section. And next, we're gonna need to install all of the bearings and hardware for the headset that lets us mount the forks. So the bike comes with these two bearing cups, and these will sit in the tear tube like that. So looking at the forks, when we install them into the steer tube, some forks need a spacer put here and they include that in the kit and the headset. This fork actually has that built in. So this part here will sit flush on the bearing rink. This piece is gonna go on the top of the forks. Now the silver part of the forks goes in the steer tube, the gold goes ahead. We can go ahead and take the spacer we just looked at and place that at the top. Since the bike's sideways, that's not gonna sit perfectly flush yet, but we can go ahead and put this other piece on top. And then we've got one more ring. We're gonna go ahead and place it on top of that. We can go ahead and place the triple tree section. Now, without tightening any of this, I'm gonna go ahead and put a clamp temporarily, and then we'll stand the bike up. Now there's a spacer in here, and that spacer needs to go down flush. Otherwise, there will be play in the head tube. To do that, I'm gonna put the clamp back and tighten it as much as I can. I'm gonna grab another one and tighten the right side and do it symmetrically. This should still be able to spin freely. 
but you do not want to feel any play from within. I'm going to go ahead and retension these bolts down. With these three tightened, the forks should be on there. They should move smoothly. There should be no play forward, backward, left and right. It should be solid. With the forks attached, the next thing I want to do is put the front wheel on the bike. The front axle is held on by a few bolts and screws. On the front of the fork, you have four more bolts that you're going to want to loosen. Now we can take our wheel, making sure that the brake rotor is on the left side and also making sure that the rotation direction is correct on the rotor and the wheel one last time. And we can drop it in. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts, the ones that are on the outside. I'm gonna do that side by side, a couple twists at a time to make sure the force is even on the left and right. Once you confirm that's squared up, you can go ahead and tighten the four bolts on the front again. The next thing I'm gonna do is put the kickstand on the bike. That way I can work on the bike while it's standing up. All right, now that the bike is standing up by itself, um, I like to start mounting components to it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this tray here that is meant to protect the battery. And then I can mount the speed controller underneath here. So this tray is secured by four screws. You can see two of them here. And there's another two on the back side down here. And with this piece removed, you have access to the whole inside of the frame. So our speed controller here has four mounting tabs. We're gonna find somewhere for it to sit around here. So I've got the speed controller clamp in place where I want it to mount. What I've got here is called a hole punch. What I'll do is find where I wanna drill my holes and then press. And what that does is leave a little divot in the frame so that when I pull the speed controller, I can drill the holes and then put it back. So you'll see when I remove the speed controller, I'll have four divots in the frame. Now I can go ahead and take my drill bit and drill the four holes. I'll be using some 1032 button head screws to put this in place. I'll go ahead and pull the clamp now and I'll tighten these screws. So now that the speed controller is mounted securely, I'm thinking about mounting the battery. The frame comes with this nice tray and cover situation. However, my battery is just barely too long. So here I've got a Cardellini, which is a film style clamp. I'm gonna try to bend here. I'm just gonna tighten that down, try to bend. And that's actually worked really well. So with that bent flat now, although it still does fit in here well, it blocks these holes on the frame. So let's take a look at how the battery fits. We don't really need all this metal here, so I'm gonna try to bend it back and forth repeatedly until it snaps off. And it made a very clean break there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and file it down. With this all filed down, we can do a test fit, and that sits nicely and it no longer blocks the holes here. And we'll throw the battery in as well, just to look at where it sits. So after test fitting the battery in here, I realized that this cover piece is not going to fit. And instead, I'm gonna have some Velcro straps that go around underneath and hold the battery in place. And we'll get to that later. Basically, I wanted to see where this fits and where that sat so that I could think about where the DC-DC should go. So here is our DC-DC. Our seat is gonna mount back here. So we don't wanna put anything in there. Maybe there's some room down below here. Not so much. We've got our electronic wiring and our key and all that stuff is gonna be up here. Maybe it's our best bet to throw the DC-DC mount somewhere in there. So since I know where this is going on the inside, I can place it up here, centered on the frame. And now with this here temporarily, I can use my hole punch again to make four screw holes. Now I'll pull the battery and I'll pull the tray. Now I can verify that the holes line up and it does. And now what I'm gonna do is mount the battery in and then I'll mount the DC-DC in because I don't think it'll fit if I just do the DC-DC um, now and then try to put the battery back. So we've got this tray cut here. I'm gonna take some foam. I'm gonna lay the foam down to put the battery on. And that fits pretty nicely, but there are some gaps on the left and right. So I've got some scrap wood here. And with the wood in the sides here, this fits a lot nicer, so this won't move anymore. And the way this will mount in the bike is we'll put some Velcro through here and we'll Velcro strap it with a couple Velcro straps so that it can't move. I'm gonna pull the battery out again, mount this back into the bike, put the battery in, put the wood in and secure it all.
and we can strap our battery in. Cool. We want to make sure that's really tight because we don't want the battery moving around. Now that the battery is in place, the DC DC can fit in. I'm going to screw it in from the top and I'll hold the nuts from the bottom with the vice grip. So here we have the stem and we'll just install it here. So the stem comes shipped like this with four screws in it, but because our bars are smaller, we do need some shorter screws. Luckily, this is 1032 and we have a lot of that laying around. All right, there's our handlebars. Now we're gonna do the headlight. I'm gonna go ahead and use the first setting, the narrowest setting. And we'll repeat that on the other side. And with the brackets in place, we can throw on the headlight. Next, I wanna throw the seat post on. We've got this white seat post that goes here. And the frame comes with four of these sets of screws and washers that allow us to attach it. So we've got the seat post mounted. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the seat clamp, so I can't put the seat on yet. But with that, almost all of the major assembly is completed. The next thing I'm gonna start on is wiring and a wiring harness. I haven't mounted the turn signals in the front or the rear. I don't have the throttle on there yet. I don't have the regen lever or any of the switches yet. I don't even have the horn on there, but we're gonna lay all that out on the table and we're gonna make sure everything has connectors and figure out how we wanna wire everything up. And then once we know and once we put connectors on and everything, we'll come back, install all that, install everything else that's missing, and then the bike should be done.